Ladies and gentlemen, Stevie J here with a fun and exciting night of XFC 25 fights to talk about. And I will go down the results one by one for everything that was televised. Can't speak to the prelims that weren't on Access TV, so I apologize for that. I'm sure if you really want that information badly enough, Sure Dog or somebody like that has them. But here's what I saw, starting with Joby Sanchez, the hometown favorite tonight from Albuquerque. And he was wearing fangs on his way to the ring. I guess he really wanted to make sure he would be noticed. He fought Eric Moel in a flyweight bout and got the win the crowd wanted. He got a TKO at 325 of the first round. Moel didn't really look to be in his class. I wouldn't say he was a tomato can because both guys have very short records and you can never tell about that sort of thing. But Joby won and that was what everybody wanted. XFC wanted it and the crowd definitely wanted it. So Albert Kirky was happy about this one. At lightweight we had Lando Bonata and J.P. Reese. Reese has a story in that his time at Missouri he got the second most pins ever. Number one was Funky Ben Askren. Not surprisingly, Reese did a lot of wrestling in this fight, but Venata was trying like hell to catch him with a punch any time they had a trade, and any time he did, he hurt him, so he was able to pull out a split decision. It was 30-27 Venata, 29-28 Reese, and 29-28 for Venata. Now, I honestly don't think Venata won all three rounds. I'm pretty sure that he got out-wrestled in a couple of those, but... This was not actually the biggest BS decision of the XFC card. That comes later. Then we had Rocky France and Ryan Thomas. And this one really was a tomato can because France was 3-6 and six and just only had a puncher's chance in this fight. And that didn't work out for him because he tapped out to a leg triangle at 127 of the second round. And his opponent Thomas improved to 17-7. and seven. Then we had a featherweight contenders bout between Steven Bass and Farkad Sharapov. And in this one, Sharapov and Steven were pretty close throughout the first round, but in the second, he got a takedown, and Bass tried to make it a guillotine choke, but was unable to. Sharapov took over because Bass suddenly gassed out, and I do mean suddenly. He totally lost his energy in a heartbeat, was staggering on his feet, couldn't stand up because he was so tired, and Sharapov pounced on him and started pouring on shots and was sitting on his back, raining down blows until the referee stepped in to save Bass. So Sharapov wins and becomes the number one contender, or at least gets into a number one contender's fight with this victory. And uh, we move on to Diego Lima and Ricky Rainey. And this is where I really think they screwed the pooch, because... Rainey was clearly outstriking Lima for the majority of this fight. And, uh, and the only reason that I would even give Lima round two is that he got a couple of takedowns, but they were really weak. He couldn't keep Rainey down. He did nothing with it while he had him on the ground. I don't buy that Lima won this fight. Rainey was just pouring it on in the third round. Lima looked terrible, but the decision did not go Rainey's way. He lost this fight, getting only 129-28 from the judges. And in the main event, Angela Magana and Stephanie Egging finally put their war of words aside and decided who was the strawweight champion. Round one was pretty close. I actually thought Egging got the better of it, but that's not what Militic thought when they did the scorecards on screen, so who knows. In the second round, she got a takedown, but Egging used her length and reach to her advantage and put on a leg triangle and tapped Magana out and became the inaugural strawweight champion of XFC at 311 of the second round. That's XFC 25. I'm Stevie J from AngryMarks.com, Fight Game Blog, and Wrestling Observer.